Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Chairman, thank you very much for this opportunity. It's a great privilege for me to be invited in this prestigious meeting to speak about this major topic in the this major problem in the major question in the topic of deep endometriosis. So I will try to argue why the surgery sh should not be overlooked in women with deep endometriosis and pregnancy wish. Uh, how, how should I uh, move? Uh, green, okay. So recent guidelines from ASHRA and the World Endometriosis Society stated that no randomized controlled trial specifically explores this question. There is no evidence to recommend performing surgical excision of deep endometriosis prior to IRT to improve fertility outcomes. In only women with IVF is mandatory. However, the guidelines do not specify who are those women and do not state that all women with deep endometriosis require IVF. Far from more, they mention that the surgical treatment is often required by painful symptoms related to deep endometriosis. And they also emphasize the risk of reducing the ovarian reserve after ovarian endometrioma cystectomy. In daily practice, in my opinion, there is a misunderstanding of these clever recommendations. And uh, let's see the classical history of a young woman who stops the pill to get pregnant. He experienced rapidly increasing cyclic pain, which reveals colorectal endometriosis after only four to six months of spontaneous conception attempts. Colorectal endometriosis is one of the most severe form of deep endometriosis. However, in theory, this interval of four to six months is too short to state that the woman is infertile. So the patient is referred to a gynecologist, and the gynecologist will ask the, the patient, what is your priority? Relieving pain or getting pregnant? Frightened by the danger or the, by the danger of infertility, the patient will say, uh, of course, uh, getting pregnant. So the, it is very likely that the physician refers the patient directly to IVF. In my opinion, the first question is wrong because it suggests that the two goals, relieving pain and getting pregnant, cannot be simultaneously achieved. Far from more, once the patient is referred to IVF, she will record it as being infertile in the physician database. Now, let's see the likelihood of pregnancy if this young woman is directly referred for an IVF. Pregnancy rates observed through a couple of series in the literature vary between 43 to 68%. And I'm sure you know this uh, valuable study um, reported by my friend Marcos Ballester from the Tenon Hospital in Paris. He prospectively followed up 75 patients with colorectal endometriosis without surgery who underwent IVF. 68% also had associated endometriomas, 28% adenomyosis, and 43% ultimately conceived. However, only 32% delivered. And Marcos estimated that the cumulative pregnancy rate could reach up to 69% after free cycle of IVF. However, he actually observed 43% women pregnant in this area. Now, please let me draw attention to her likelihood to get pregnant after primary surgery. And this likelihood may vary up to 71%. In a recent review of the literature, coming from the reported by the Tenon Hospital team, they pulled together series of patients managed by colorectal resection for colorectal deep endometriosis. So we, we stay in the field of the very severe deep endometriosis. And they observed that after the surgery, the patients had 29% spontaneous conception rate and 26% IVF conception rate, 
leading to an overall pregnancy rate of 47%. In another review, the team from Milano uh, excluded women not seeking to conceive spontaneously, uh, preoperatively, and women with postoperative AORT. So they focused on spontaneous pregnancy after the surgery of deep infiltrating endometriosis. And they estimated that the pregnancy rate after the surgery would be 24%. So one woman out of four does not longer need IVF to conceive after the surgery. It means that the policy, a policy of the systematic IVF in deep endometriosis before the surgery should be based on the demonstration that the surgery would reduce the rate of successful IVF by at least 24% in order to balance the excess of spontaneous pregnancies. To my knowledge, this demonstration has not been provided. We recently reported a series of women with both ovarian endometriomas and colorectal DIE. And we observed that all these patients underwent surgery and the pregnancy rate after the surgery was 66% and the majority of pregnancies were spontaneous. Far from more, when we compare this woman with women managed for only endometriomas, we observed that the colorectal management did not decrease the pregnancy rate. And when we, when we estimated the pregnancy rate at three years, we found that it could be as high as 74%, but we actually observed 66% of pregnancy rate. In another study where uh, they were pulled patients with colorectal endometriosis from Rouen and Tenon Hospital, we tried to estimate the postoperative pregnancy rate using IVF in women with complete colorectal endometriosis uh, surgery. And we observed 60% pregnancy rate, while the cumulative pregnancy rate could rise up to 78% after free IVF. And we also observed in this study that there were two factors associated with better results, the conservative surgery on the rectum, meaning shaving or disc excision, and the fact of performing IVF not later than 18 months after the surgery. And I will finish by the end of randomized trial, which is the first randomized trial comparing radical surgery by segmental resection to conservative surgery by shaving or disc excision in women with severe large rectal endometriosis. So the main outcome of this study was functional outcomes two years after the, after the surgery. However, the follow-up of this patient is still ongoing and uh, it varies from 42 to, seven to 72 months. 50% of patients had also ovarian endometrioma ablation. And what we observe that 71% of patients are actually pregnant and 66% of pregnancies were spontaneous. 65% of patients had a baby. To my knowledge, a such high rate of postoperative, of the, such high rate of pregnancy, uh, stuff, a such high pregnancy rate has never been reported after primary IVF in this specific population. However, there are also a couple of studies where the authors tried to understand whether or not performing surgery before IVF could improve fertility outcomes. And the first study, I, I'm sure you know it, is the, is the study published by the Sao Paulo team. The first author is Paolo Bianchi. So they enrolled women with deep endometriosis and infertility in a prospective study where the patient chose by themselves the strategy, either IVF or surgery followed by RVF. And the authors concluded that extensive laparoscopic excision of deep endometriosis improved IVF pregnancy rate in women with infertility because they observed 41% pregnancy rate 
after the surgery versus 24% after uh, IVF. Far from more, they observed that there is no impact of deep endometriosis surgery on OOC retrieval unless, unless ovarian endometrioma cystectomy was simultaneously performed. It means, it means that if the surgeon only treat the deep endometriosis, there is no harmful impact on uh, IVF results. However, the authors choose to exclude the patients with, with uh, spontaneous pregnancy. So I call them and I ask them to check how many spontaneous pregnancy were dropped out in each arm. And they answer me, there were 18 patients spontaneously pregnant in the IVF arm versus 10 in the IVF arm. But as the patients in the IVF arm were uh, more numerous, it leads to a, uh, to a, um, uh, to a pregnant, spontaneous pregnancy rate of 8% without surgery and 21% with surgery, meaning that the overall pregnancy rate will be 30 versus 51% meaning significantly superior in the surgical arm. And this is another study. You have uh, never seen it because it is in press, infertility and sterility, where we pulled together patients from Rouen and from Tenon Hospital, and we matched them using the propensity, propensity score. So there were 55 patients with colorectal endometriosis in each arm, some of them had first-line surgery, some of them had first-line A or T. And we observed higher pregnancy rate after surgery, 60 versus 38%, and also higher cumulative pregnancy rate after surgery, after one, two, or three IVF cycles. And far from more, you observed better cumulative pregnancy rate after surgery in patients with one of more poor predictive factors, such as age over 35 year, AMH inferior to two nanogram by milliliter and adenomyosis. In conclusion, I think we, we cannot definitively state whether or not the surgery should be performed in patients with uh, deep endometriosis and uh, pregnancy intention. And we cannot state that all the patients should have an uh, IVF. However, as we have no randomized trial, we can cogitate using available data. And we can, we can, data suggests that negative impact on ovarian reserve is related, sure, related to the endometrioma cystectomy, but probably not with the deep endometriosis surgery. And in daily practice, we can manage a such patient by removing the deep nodule and just draining the endometrioma cyst. We can, uh, we can state that data suggests that total pregnancy rate may be higher after primary surgery. There is an excess of spontaneous conception following deep endometriosis surgery, and this rate is at least 24%. And we, cannot, uh, we have no data about the benefits in terms of reduction of health, health expenses but it should be uh, superior in the surgical arm. So I can finish by saying that we have no arguments to recommend systematic primary IVF in women with deep endometriosis and pregnancy wish. Thank you. Thank you very much, Horace. So now we are going to listen to the arguments of uh, Professor Golfier uh, for 15 minutes and then We'll have the answer from each of you.